Ephesians chapter 5. Aren't you glad you're alive? Aren't you glad you're the head and not just here to survive? Aren't you glad you're blessed? Thank you for your enthusiasm, Door County. Aren't you glad you're blessed? Aren't you glad you live in this great place with birds and trees and things like that? Hallelujah. I'm thankful for all that God has blessed us with. Oh, yeah, get ready for this. Are you in Ephesians? That's good. You are. I'm not. Hallelujah. I'll get over there real quick. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Are you ready for this this morning? Hallelujah. Verse 20-something. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her, speaking of the church, to himself. How many know Jesus is about ready to do that? There's, listen to me. There's coming a time where the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is going, God is going to present to uh, the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ a church not having what? Spot or what? Wrinkle or what? Any such thing. Hallelujah. Now that church in heaven's like that, isn't it? But there's going to be a church on earth. I call it the church inside the church. Glory to God. I call it that remnant church. I call it that church inside the church that just are not going to accept second best. They are going to go and receive number one. A umero numero. The best of the spirit and the best of the word, man. Hallelujah. Arise. Notice it says it's a glorious church. Everybody say glorious church. What does that mean to you? Church feel with a glory and the presence and the power and the blessing and the anointing of God. The gifts of the Spirit in operation in full force. Faith in operation in full force. Love in operation in full force. Hallelujah. Everybody in their spot. Everybody functioning, praise God, where they're supposed to be functioning. Everybody blessed, praise God, and out of debt. Come on, everybody. Everybody healed, everybody delivered, everybody with a testimony, praise God, that pleases God. We're all being positioned for this great last thrust of God. Oh, what a harvest it's going to be. Hallelujah. Your unsaved loved ones, they have been the toughest, toughest, praise God. They're going to come into this place. Hallelujah. They're going to come into places that God has all over. He's positioning them right now, glory to God, all over America and around the world to receive the harvest of God. We're in that beginning process. We're in that transformation process. We're in the beginning throes of the greatest revival ever that's going to hit planet Earth. It is now, praise God. It is not to wait anymore. We're here now. Isn't it great? Isn't it awesome, praise God, to be in part of that? Right now? Hallelujah. A glorious church. Now, look at Acts chapter 17 because I, I got a bone to pick with, 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 with Door County. Everybody say amen. Because, you know, the people of Door County are good people, aren't they? Look at your neighbor and say, you're a good person. And look at somebody else and say, you're a good person. It's nice. Stella and I came here from Reno. Everybody say amen. We came here from California. To a certain point, are you all listening to me? To a certain point, the people we were used to dealing with, when we got up here, the sinners had more fruits of the Spirit than the Christians did there. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm. We were thrown back because by nature, these people up here are good family people. They love, you know, they're loving, kind, sweet, most of them people, you know, that type of thing. Raised in good families. Family people, church-going folks. Problem is, they think that that's the way you get into heaven. There's no conviction of sin on their lives, a lot of them. They don't have that, that understanding that you're going to split hell wide open if you don't have Jesus. Right. Religion won't get you there. Amen. So when God planted me and my wife up here, I ran in. I was like a caboose in a china shop. <laughs> or a, what, a bull. an engine is what I meant. I, I was <laughs> hooking onto the rear there, whatever, praise God. But I was, I was just like, I fell out of place. And I thought, well, Lord, maybe I ought to make some changes, you know. And I kept praying about it. And people would come to me, and they'd try to help you along. How many know people want to help you along? Hallelujah. 
And they would try to come to me and they'd say things like this. And I know they meant well. Come on, everybody. I, I understand that. But they would say things to me like this. If you calm down, more people will come. If you just relax a little bit and don't get so intense, people will come. If Jennifer Burns would learn how to calm down a little bit, people, more people would come. If you just have Tim stop dancing up there, it wouldn't offend my Uncle Ralph who came one time. If you just would take the gifts of the Spirit out a little bit, and not because people don't understand that. They're not used to that, Pastor Tom. We don't understand that here. And so it offends some people, hallelujah, when you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving and the gifts of God moving. Amen. Amen. And I would make a comment to them, look, I'm not here, praise God, you know, <laughs> they're saying you're rocking the boat too much, you're rocking the boat. I'm not here to rock the boat, we're here to turn the boat over, hallelujah. Yeah. We are here, praise God, to put pressure back on the devil until he backs off enough until the glory of God hits this place, hallelujah. We are a sign. Yeah. Not to back down, but to get more intense, more intense, more intense, more intense. And that spirit of intenseness and boldness to hit you until we have a group of people big enough, praise God, to move this area into revival. That's what I'm assigned to do. Acts chapter 17, look at verse 6. Notice this. But when they did not find them... They dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Amen. Christians in the early church were not like the American Christians of today. Christians in the early church were so intense, so sold out, so bold, so filled with God, so filled with faith, so filled with love, so filled with passion for God, so filled with worship to God that they were ones that wherever they went turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are ones, praise God, that God is going to use in this generation to raise, praise God, part in this place of the glorious church that's rising all over the land, praise God. Hallelujah. Just a little bit here, a little bit here. You see these churches being raised up. And let me tell you something about that. God is raising them up, praise God, not so that they can have a little impact on society, but turn the literal world we live in upside down. Glory to God. Amen. That's what we're called to do. Amen. That's the kind of passion we're going to have to have. Amen. That's the kind of thing we're involved in. That's the kind of Christianity that is only acceptable to God and only has always been acceptable to God, not just this other thing, praise God, where we come to church and play church and go home. No, he wants us, praise God, to be people that are so filled with God. We turn the world upside down. We rock the elementary schools and the high schools, praise God, and the college campuses and the political system. gets rocked back to where it should be, hallelujah. We begin to take back, hallelujah. Are you listening to me real good today? We need to take back what the devil has stolen from us because the church of the 50s and the church of someone in the 60s sat around and let the devil take over the school systems and let the devil take over the college campuses and let the devil take over politics. We've got to get those people out and get, praise God, turned on, fired up, Holy Ghost filled people in, praise God. We've got to be militant and strong and aggressive. Now, what's it going to take? Well, look at Acts chapter 1. Let's look at some of the principles. <coughs> Where'd that water go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> some of the principles that it's going to take. How many want me to tell you the truth? All right, let me give it to you this way. How many want to fix, how many want to know how to fix things? How many here want to get th things fixed in your life without 13 years of waiting? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many here want to get things fixed in your life and marriage and all of that without 22 years of waiting? Yeah. How many here want to, don't want to have to go to counseling for 44 years to get delivered from some kind of problem in your brain? Amen. How many here will want, to, want, to, want to get your, your physical body fixed yes, right. yeah. and keep it fixed? Yeah. 
How many here want to have relationships? Yes. Fellowship. Yes. Friendships. Yes. How many here want to be normal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've trained you well. How many, how many here want your God's best for your life? Okay, I'm going to share with you something today that people don't tell you. And we, we move around it in churches. We try to figure out how to do these things. We try to use a men's method every way, which way that we've got things going on. Motivate, do this, do that. Try to yank, crank. And if you just do this, I'm telling you, it's not that hard. Come on, everybody. God has given us a, if we look at it, a recipe, so to speak, that if we just do this one thing, everything else begins to fall into place. Hallelujah. I haven't understood Christians for years. Me and my wife haven't understood them. How come they have so many problems and things in their life all the time? Sure, you're going to have challenges. Everybody say amen. I mean, I understand that. I've had more challenges than any other preacher up here. Amen. I got people who believe I'm a kook. I do. I, I, got, I, got, I got people, other preachers and stuff that think that we're just, you know, we're too far out there and so on. But the truth of the matter is I really don't care about that because I run with a group of kooks. <laughs> Not only here, but all over America. I've got groups of kooks. We go, we get together, and we just get kooky. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. And those kooks, those fanatics, those people like that are the most blessed, most anointed, most prosperous, most joyous, most happy people on play, face of planet Earth. There are a group of preachers basically out here that are trying to get their congregations to follow in their footsteps so they can be blessed, happy, praise God, healed and delivered. But when we get together as a bunch of preachers out there at Pismo Beach or somewhere and we're sitting around in the jacuzzi together, that place is about, that, that jacuzzi is about ready to boil without any heat. Because you don't see them walking around going, oh, woe is me, I'm hurting so bad. Oh, my God, I'll never make it to the next step. No, they have found out something. Yes. Then we want you to find out. What is it? Look at Acts chapter 1. Are you ready for this this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Glory to God. Till the day which, when he was taken up a after the through the holy spirit had given commandments everybody say commandments Amen. say it again commandments. commandments jesus spent 40 days after his resurrection walking amongst them teaching them and giving them commandments now how many know that would have been heavy in fact it wasn't just the the the, the apostles who were seeing it the bible says that praise got up to 500 brethren had seen this now, I don't know about you, that would have been an interesting church service to be in when Jesus appeared after his resurrection and gave them what? Commandments. We do have some what? Commandments. Things that Jesus instructed his disciples and his apostles to do. I'm going to show that to you today. Verse 2. To whom he had presented himself alive after the suffering by many infallible proofs, having been seen during the 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he what? He suggested something to them. No. No, he commanded. Now, how many here love the Lord? Amen. If he appeared to you today, up here, you know, and he had like a robe and, and sandals and, and just appeared and said, son, sit down. I went and sat down over there because I would. And he started talking to you. And he said, I've given you a what? Amen. How many here would take, would take notes and listen? Yes. How many here would try to follow exactly what he said to do? Well, you say, why? Because, my God, it was Jesus who told us that. He appeared to us, and we know, praise God, because we saw him, you know, that this was something we had to do. Well, folks, we have his word. What's the difference? In the beginning was the what? The word. The word was with God, and the word was God. God commanded them to do some things. He didn't suggest. New Testament Christians don't like the word commandment because they think you're getting back under the law. But we're not getting back under the law. There are some commandments for New Testament Christians. We've got to love one another, number one. Yes. That's a commandment of the Lord. That's not a suggestion, the great suggestion. That's a commandment. We are, we are commanded but to walk by faith. Yes. Because anything that's not of faith is what? Sin. But I'm going to show you where it all started. I'm going to show you where it all started today and why there has been what has been the missing link in every church in the world. Even word of faith churches have a missing link. 
Everybody say amen with, mo with a lot of the people in there. Not because they don't have the potential to walk in this, but simply because after they receive an initial experience in this area, they give up on it and they apply it like they should. And therefore, and because I'm writing this book right now, how many know it's on my heart? But just because if they would continue to apply it, as you will see, they would stay in the place where they need to be and there wouldn't be this up and down, jumping up and down and, and backsliding and, 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 and going through times where, where, where they're not really pressing in like they should. And we wouldn't have this idea, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, where Jesus had to tell us that only one out of four got the word where it hit their heart and they bore fruit. Everybody would be, it would be hitting their heart and bearing fruit if they would just... Listen, because how many know the early church turned the world, what, upside down? How many know we're still part of that church, by the way? It hadn't changed. Amen. It's not the book of Acts. It's the book of the church. Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. We're still writing that sucker. Amen. When you get to heaven, you're going to find out that that book's longer. Amen. Now, the Lord has, ha, has given us what he's given us now for that volume. But when you get to heaven, you're going to find out that there's more to the book of Acts than, than what you see there. Amen. We're still writing that thing. You're writing it. I'm writing it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Maybe I'll go preach in California. They like to shout out there. Hallelujah. You know, they shout in Rochester, Minnesota louder than they do here. That surprised me. Those people are running around the building. That pastor must have done a great job. He's been there 16 years, so hallelujah. Glory to God. Or six years or whatever. Six years. All right, look at this. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he what? Commanded. He commanded them. Now, what did he command them? Now, how many know if he commanded them this, he, it was probably part of what he was talking about all the time. There's some things I'm certain he talked to them about. Number one, you're going to walk in love. Number two, you're going to walk in faith. Number three, this. Probably not just necessarily in those. But I'm sure that those are things he talked about. He told his apostles. Everybody in the church must be filled with the Holy Ghost and get filled, speak with tongues, and stay filled with the Holy Ghost for the rest of their life. If they don't, you know the reason I know this? Because if you look everywhere they went, the first thing they ask them, did you receive the Holy Ghost since you believe? Very first thing. Next book I got coming out has that. You know, you'll follow it. Very first thing they told them. The very first thing I, I, when I, when I talk to somebody out there that just got saved, I say to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Why? It's vital. Amen. Absolutely vital for us to be able to participate in the things that God has called us to do and to say and to teach and to be. Yeah. If you're not totally immersed in the Holy Ghost, it's going to be very difficult to be able to keep the things that he says in there because it's all based on us being powered by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Jesus told his disciples, look, man, it's better that I leave. They're all going, what do you mean it's better that you leave? If I don't leave, the Holy Ghost can't come. And live on the inside of you. Glory to God. And then greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. We begin to flow into some things that are so powerful because God Almighty is on the inside of you. That blood has cleansed you to the point to where God can come on the inside of you. That's pretty good cleansing. I don't think you can get any more cleansed than that. People for years have, have talked about how sinful we are. Well, as far as God's concerned, you know, we need to deal with sin. What do you do? You confess your sins. But thank God, as far as God's concerned, the second you receive Jesus, he does a world-class cleansing job on you that is so good that him, he himself can actually, the Holy God can live on the inside of you and your spirit. That is powerful, man. And the church has never heard that. We've never really heard that. We never really saw that. We've never really had that demonstrated in this generation. God inside you. Christ inside you. The anointed one. And the hope of glory is on the inside. Man. Think about that. 
he comes to them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together together, asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to, to Israel? And verse 8 says, and you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It is important for the church to be empowered. Why? To be a witness, to be witness, to witness, to be witnesses. We got to have that power. Yeah. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, it's important for us to understand. And if you look at Acts chapter 2, of course, verse, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all with one accord. Everybody say in one place. They all believed this. They were all waiting for that commandment. They didn't understand what was going to happen, but they knew God had commanded them. Jesus had commanded them, and they waited. They're going to wait. Guess what happened to them? Praise God, when they were there, suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole place where they were sitting. Amen. He says, there appeared to them divided tongues as fire set upon each of them. And they were all, everybody say all. all. Feel. What? Feel. feel. Immerse. Baptize. Dunk. Completely submerged. Amen. In the Holy Ghost and begin. Begin means that's something they started to do but didn't stop doing. They began to what? Speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them the ability. Hallelujah. They were all filled, overflowing with the Holy Ghost. They were all baptized, praise God, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. They were all completely immersed, filled, literally lit up by the fires of God. And they were so lit up by the fires of God, they walked around everywhere and they just started shouting, praising God and, and, and speaking in tongues. And, and, and that, that generation that was there in, 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 in Jerusalem at the time from all over the world, the Jews, they saw them and they heard them magnifying God. They thought they were drunk. They looked at them and they were so happy, shouting, falling out, whatever they were doing, that they said, you guys are drunk. They said, no, we're not drunk as you suppose. We are drunk, but not like you think. <laughs> in fact, Peter said, I never got this drunk. I, I can imagine Peter was one of those boys that had a few in his life, you know. I guarantee you, Peter, I, I know for sure, he'd tip a few sometimes. Them fishermen like a, a beer or two after, after work. Sometimes more than a beer or two. You understand what I'm talking about? Peter was the type of guy, when he went to take communion, he took a lot of it. In the Old Testament days, when he was growing up. They said, we're not, we're not drunk like you guys suppose. We are immersed. We are baptized. We are filled to overflowing. We got so much Holy Ghost, it's, it's coming in us, around us, on us, through us, and back out of us. Glory to God. Yeah. Woo! It's like somebody took us in a bath and, and, and took our bodies and our minds and our spirits and dunked us in a bath of pure Holy Ghost glory. Pulled us out when we were glowing with that Holy Ghost glory. And he commanded them, you make sure every child of God gets a message that they need to get filled and stay filled with the Holy Ghost. So when you're reading this Bible, it is written to born again, spirit filled, tongue talking, baptized to overflowing Holy Ghost people. It's not written into some denominational guy who doesn't know anything about it. It's for them, but it's not written into them because it was written to spirit filled, born again. They made sure, everybody say amen, they made sure those new converts were filled with the whole, come on. Are you listening to me? Because God said, you're not going to be able to live this unless you are completely dunked, immersed, and stay that way. From the very beginning. Are you guys getting anything out of this? Are you sure? <laughs> so Peter standing up says, you know, look, verse 14, he stands up, he, say, he raises his voice and says, man, he says, he says, all you guys who are dwelling in Jerusalem, let it be known and heed my words, for we're not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day, not even Peter did that, but this is that which was spoken the prophet Joel, we have some people who might have been here, but not Peter, this is that which was spoken by what, the prophet Joel, it's like Joe Jordan says all the time, Hallelujah, belly up to the bar. Amen. Joel is in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everywhere we go, they call my wife the joy lady. 
And I, you know, we were at, we were at in Santa Cruz. Everybody say Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. If you've got anybody that's depressed, it's Santa Cruzian. They're all on dope. The government provides it for them. Amen. It's like Amsterdam. Belly up, get your drugs. We'll give you drugs, and if you can prove you're psychotic, which is easy to do, we'll give you dope. So all the believers come in there on dope because they're all supposed to be mentally ill. Church is full of them. Our prayer lines are funny. So I go out there filled up with the Holy Ghost. Are you out there? And I got up in this last year church. This is the we, they finally got a pastor out there that has some get up and go. And he had these people cranking. They're running around the building. And I'm thinking, dear God. And we had our says, I got up and the anointing came on me. And we just had, we cast out devils. Devils are going, you know, they're coming out of everybody. Things are happening. People are getting healed all over the place. It is dynamic. And we're sitting there. And after I'm done, the pastors haul me off into the back room back there because I'm about rang out like a wet rag. And I'm sitting in the, what they call the green room. You know what I'm talking about? The place where you hide. And I'm sitting back there, and my wife's out peddling books and tapes. She's got these books. We've got a book and tape table. And all of a sudden, we hear this commotion out there. And I go, what is it? And I hear Stella, hee, hee. You know how she laughs. Ha, 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 ha. And then I hear all these other people. Well, what's happening is people are buying books and they're getting drunk in the spirit. They're falling out in the foyer. They're piled up all over the foyer, left and right. There's a big pile of them out there. And this one granny, this one granny who came out of the occult world found Jesus. She was drunker than Bill Hogan's goat. And they had a greater service after the service than we did in the service. It happens wherever we go. We went to Santa Cruz one time and we were out there and, we, and they took us to, to a restaurant, honest to God. They took us to a restaurant. We went in this restaurant after service and Stella's drunk. And I'm talking about she's hammered. We're having to almost carry her in. You know, and, 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 so we put her down and, and I'm kind of embarrassed because I'm not in the anointing. And when you're not in the anointing, how many know sometimes that can kind of embarrass you? That's why some of you feel funny when people get all excited. It's almost like because you're in the flesh. When you get over in the spirit, how many know you'll rejoice too? Amen. Remember when you were in the bar scene? Now don't raise your hands. You go in there and you know, a couple of those. Next thing you know, you might have been the most reserved individual in the world, but you got a lampshade. Woo! You know, you didn't care. That's what begins to happen when the Holy Ghost infuses you. You don't care what people think. You're not inhibited anymore. You're going to shout praise God. I mean, some of you are going to get so full of God at work, you're actually going to say praise the Lord. I mean, you're going to be infused. And old Steve, we're hauling Stella, and all of a sudden Stella's over there. Eh! And the waitress thought she was drinking. And they always tell Stella, we're not serving you. She says, I don't need anything. I've been served. Hallelujah. <laughs> and these waitresses keep coming up, you know. Honestly, this is a true story. And these are secular people. Some church people, Baptists, Methodists, you know, they beat you to the cafeteria. Because <laughs> our services are longer. Everybody say Amen. So they're sitting in there. I'm sure there was some church people, but mostly secular people. I mean, and, and in Santa Cruz, we're talking secular people. We're talking as secular as you can get. We're talking France-believing, Amsterdam-believing people. You understand what I'm talking about? We're talking loony fringe. We're talking way out there on the left, way over the cliff. Socialists and communists. Witches and warlocks and demonic satanic people, new age. So we're sitting in there, whoo, she's laughing. And honest to God, that place was full of people. And before long, everybody was laughing. Everybody in the building was laughing hysterically. They couldn't take it. They were laughing so hard. It just began to permeate and permeate. Come on, and permeate and permeate. People were getting up and walking by Stella who didn't even know her and were giving her offerings. <laughs> Putting offerings on our table, throwing money at her. I don't know you. I like you. Here's 20 bucks. You say, is that a true story? It happens all the time. Why? Because, hallelujah, she's filled to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. You get some people that are filled with the Holy Ghost, anything's liable to happen. And you don't have to be laughing for it to happen. You just need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because I have some new wine in my mantle that happens, but she's got Jack Daniels. All right.
moving the light along, so the Baptist got a kick out of that. Verse 14, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea, and you dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known unto you, heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Everybody say amen. amen. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Look at down at verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Everybody say, cut to the heart. Why? When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, your words will cut them. You can get up and smile at them and say, I love you. You know, they'll just cut them to the heart. Why? There's power there. There's dynamite there. It's not like... Oh, you know, this is why I like our, our group of preachers that I hang with. We, we get up and we just let you have it, both barrels without any kind, praise God, of worry about whether you're offended or not. Everybody say amen. amen. No, I'm not going to offend people on purpose because of my personality. My personality will offend somebody, but that's their problem. Amen. But when you're giving them the word, how many know, praise God, if they get offended? Jesus did that. He offended everybody. He offended people everywhere he went. Just offended the fire out of them because he was trying to get them to change. And if they would listen to him and they would hook up with him, how many know they would change them? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? They were cut to heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men, what, brethren, what must we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the mission of sins, and you'll receive the what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise that you're seeing right now operating in us is to you and to your children. Everybody say, to them, them. their children, children. and to who? All who are what? Afar off, as many as the Lord God will call. Now, who does that leave out? Does that leave out Baptists, Lutheran, Methodists, Catholics? Anybody that God calls is commanded by God to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Not suggested. Yes. Commanded. Yes. And if they don't, they're never going to be able to receive all that God has for them. Their lives are going to suffer. Now listen to me. And they're not going to be able to re walk in the benefits and all, praise God, that Calvary has to offer. Amen. Now, go over to Acts chapter 4. I want to show you this because this is important. And I'm going to speed this up because we've got to, we're going to receive communion today. Are you guys getting anything out of this? Then we're going to the zoo. Hallelujah. Woo. Verse 20. Uh, let's look. Okay. They take, uh, verse 23. They took him out and beat him, said, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the religious people. You know, they'll do that. They'll beat on you. I've had people beat on me. Same spirit. Stop it. Not so loud. Don't let sister so-and-so get excited. Tone it down a little bit. Don't preach so much. You know, I just don't care. I'm 50 years old. Everybody say 50. 50. I don't care anymore. Amen. In fact, I didn't care back then. Amen. But the older I get, it's like Larry Huggins told me. He says when people come to my church and they got a goatee spirit, he says, I just move them down the road the first week. I don't wait because I'm wiser than I used to be. Just kick. They're going to go anyway and they might as well leave. Everybody say amen. Yeah. And I don't get offended when people leave my church. I don't, because if they leave my church, I got the right, because God gave me a promise, to claim right, he's got three good ones in their place. Amen. 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 And I do. That's what I do. So don't ever let the devil turn a negative, get you bitter. Turn a negative into a what? Positive. If Satan steals something from you, just stand up and say, I'm going to get it back sevenfold. You've got to return that to me, puppy, yes, that's right. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then, you see, you just make him mad, and he doesn't mess with you so much because he knows you're going to put the hammer down on him, that's right. and your faith is going to overcome that situation. That's, right. Amen. Amen. that's what God wants you to do all the time. We ought to be the most positive. Most, we ought to look for things we can do just to make him mad. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Just to ruffle his feathers. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't mind people leaving. I mean, that's, that's up to them because we're going to get a group of people eventually that are, praise God, what? Filled. Say it. Filled. Immersed. Baptized. Completely and totally, praise God, saturated with the glory of God. 
flexible in the presence of God, yeah. willing to do whatever God says. Hallelujah. Yeah. If God says run around the building, they're going to run around the building. They're going to jump, jump, shout, praise God, witness, whatever it is. Give, praise God. Just give because they, praise God, they're free. If you're drunk, you spend money like a wild dog. Everybody say amen. You just, shh, you don't get me. And, and, and you're going to, you know, you're going to go, sometimes you're going to come out of meetings and go, what did I do? And then you're going to realize, hey, it doesn't matter. Praise God, because somebody will knock on the door and that seed that you planted will come back to you 30, 60, or 100 fold. And you'll go, I think I'll go drink again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Set them up, Joel. Glory to God. Woo. You know, amen. Praise God. But look at this. They beat them. Everybody say they beat them. They beat them. They told them to shut up, to stop this. We command you to stop it in Jesus' name. What'd they do? Go back and have a committee. Well, should we stop a committee or not stop a committee? What'd they do? Verse 23. Being let go, they went to their own companions. How many know you got to have your own companions? Who are they? The spirit-filled dunk bunch. The Holy Ghost bunch. The Word bunch. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. This is what they said, boys, girls. So when they heard it, what'd they do? They raised their voice to God, what? With one accord, there was no dissenters in the crowd. One accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David had said, why did the nations rage and the people uh, imagine vain things and the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ? And for truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, will gather together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, you look on their threats. You're the one. Look on their threats. I'm not going to do anything about this. You do it. Look on their threats and grant to your servants. We'll do our part. You do your part. Grant to your servants that with all what? boldness they may speak your word glory to god they didn't get worse they got more bold hallelujah they didn't back off they got more intense hallelujah they didn't st they didn't stand back they got into it more hallelujah thank you for your enthusiasm 30 by stretching forth your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant jesus and when they had prayed that prayer it must have been a prayer that God liked. Because, and he liked their boldness, and he liked that the way they did things, and he wanted them to be more intense. He didn't want them to back off. He wanted them to go and trust him and just go out. And praise God, if someone got killed, they got killed. But hallelujah, how many know if you get killed for preaching the gospel, you got rewards? Whatever. You just go. Hallelujah. And when they prayed, the place there was shaken. Together with they were shaken. And they were all what? filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke the Word of God with boldness. Now, I want you to notice these are the same people that were filled with the Holy Ghost before. Yeah, amen. Now, I thought, how, how, now wait a second. Can you get filled with the Holy Ghost born one time? No. The Holy Ghost doesn't fill you and then leave you. The Holy Ghost don't jump out of you and go down the street. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, or, or what? For say. So what's happening here? Go over to Ephesians chapter 5 and I'll explain it to you. See, just because you receive the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost does not mean you're walking all the time in what God wants you to. Because in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, written to what? Born again. What? Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Spirit-filled, spirit-anointed, spirit-dunked people. Come on, everybody. Amen. The book of Ephesians was a spirit-filled church. We know this for sure. Even church history tells us these people were radical about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the tongues and the whole bit. Amen. They were dunked, baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost. Are you guys following this now? Yes. But yet, the Bible says four years, five years, six years into this thing that they, 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 they prayed and God filled them again. So what's going on here? Well, really what it is is just not understanding the Greek language. Because in Ephesians chapter 5, it's explained this way. If you look down at verse 14, Therefore he says to these dunked, born-again, spirit-filled Christians, Awake you who what? Sleep. In other words, it's possible for somebody who's been baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and, and the whole bit to get over there and to start sleeping and not use what they have. Come on, everybody. 
Awake thou who sleep, rise from the dead. It's possible for somebody that was once alive in the things of God to be dead in the things of God. We see this all the time. We see whole churches that go along for a while and they get dead. This is why Pastor Tom will not allow you to die. Somebody says, you ever raise anybody from the dead? Not in the sense you're thinking. I haven't went out and actually had somebody, you know, pray for somebody who was dead and and raised. I haven't seen that yet. I will. I haven't seen that yet. But I raised a lot of people from the dead over the years in churches. In revival services as well as, praise God, their spiritual life in whole churches. I'm not kidding either. A lot of them. God sends us to places. And the glory of God is just, just, it's nothing like here. Because I'm pastoring here. But how many know we can have it here too sometimes? But I'm not going to allow the congregation I, I hear to die no. spiritually. No. Are you kidding me? I'd rather die physically Amen. than to have the people that I pastor die spiritually That's like right. that. Be dead. Right. That once had life like these denominations Amen. in America. These great spirit-filled denominations. Dead. Dead, most of them. Dead. Did you read my lips? Dead. And whose fault is it? The preacher's. Dead. Won't allow the gifts of the Spirit in operation. Want to complain. Strife in the church. Dead. Death. Should never be in a church. We don't allow strife in our church. Come on, everybody. Where do we get the idea that we can cause strife? Where do we get the idea that that's even feasible in the body of Christ? Even a little bit. These guys knew that did not cut it. We got to walk in love. We got to stay. And how are you going to do that? You got to stay filled. Be filled. And what? Stay filled to overflow. And what? What? The Holy Ghost. Amen. So he goes on and says, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as what? Wise. How are we going to do that? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the the will of the Lord is. They had lost the understanding, some of them, about what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? Back to what Jesus commanded them when they first, praise God, uh, uh, what got into this thing, he tells them, look, do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. He's writing to Spirit-filled Christians, but he says, be filled with the Spirit. So if you go back to the original language, this, is, this explains it. The Bible says it this way. Be ye continually overflowing or filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It is not up to God to fill you with the Holy Ghost down the road every 15 days or something like that, but, you, know, you know, and just pour something out on you. It's up to you to keep yourself stirred up. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Praying in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit every single day to keep yourself filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't, you're like me. You get carnal. That's right. Amen. Or am I the only one? No. And when you get carnal, you have problems in your marriage. You have problems with yourself. You got problems with your flesh. You got problems with your mind. You got problems, praise God, over here with the, whatever you're doing at your job. You got problems, problems, problems. But when you get filled and stay completely and totally immersed, praise God, filled, praise God, with the Word, filled with the Holy Ghost, overflowing with the things of God. You walk out there, no matter what happens, you're rejoicing and shouting and praising God. And you just go through it, man. Have you ever experienced that? You know what I'm talking about. All of you do. What happens is we go back. Many times we don't stay filled. What's the difference between those preachers I was talking about you? They learned to stay filled. They got to, they got to preach the next day. You can't go into a service like that. We're, we got more pressure, so we got to. We got to press in. That motel room, we walk around there. You know, before service. I remember one time anointing, anointing God coming on me so strong. We're in the glory cloud. The glory cloud's in my room. I can't hardly see. Stella's in there. She's, she, she, I don't mean to be bored. She don't have any clothes on. She's in there, you know, putting her. And all of a sudden, she, she's grabbing. She's fun to fall out. She's holding onto the sink because the power of God's hitting her. She's over there grabbing onto the sink, you know, not to fall out. Whoa! Why? Because the glory fell in our Motel room, glory to God. That was quite a sight. Hallelujah. Not for your eyes, my eyes only. 
So he says to these people, you know what your problem is, Ephesians? You know what your problem is, Ephesians? You know what your problem is, Ephesians? You need to rise from the dead. You need to start walking in that spirit-filled life again. You need to stir this thing up. Now listen, watch this. How do you do it? Verse 19, speaking to one another psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. How many know you do that regular and in tongues too? Amen. All right, giving thanks always. Everybody say, giving thanks. You're going to walk around saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All the time. We had a thank you, Lord service Wednesday night. And the place just got filled with the glory of God. It was a thank you, Lord service. All we did was just thank the Lord for stuff. And the glory of God came in here. Woo! Like a blanket. And the devil went, oh, I'm out of here. I'm going down the street somewhere where they'll yield to me. This is just like intense. Because when the glory of God comes in, how many of those goes out? Glory in, devil out. Glory, this is not hard. Glory in, anger out. Glory in, oppression out. Glory in, sickness out. Hallelujah. Glory in, praise God, marital strife out. Glory to God. Glory in, praise God, impatience out. Glory in, whatever it is. Because God, where God's presence, how many know everything's good? There's peace. There, this is good preaching, and I'm sweating. We got to get that thing fixed, brother. <laughs> is it hot in here to you, or is it just me? Is it warm? Man, it's going to be good in the winter, but we gotta, I don't know if it's going to be this hot this summer. Everybody say amen. Are we living in Door County, or is this Texas? I don't know. Look at this. Look at this, folks. He goes, verse 20, giving thanks for all things in the Lord Jesus, Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting. Everybody say submitting to one. Amen. Write this down. You can't submit if you're not filled. You will buck against the pastor, the preacher. He'll tell you to do something. He'll try to uh, correct you a little bit, and you'll go, <laughs> just like a, a cat with a squash tail or a cornered coon. You'll begin to hiss and snarl. Why? You're walking in the flesh. If you're really in the spirit and you wanted to serve God, and you could take correction easy that way. But why is it that people get out into these areas they shouldn't? Because they walk in the flesh all the time. They were once filled with the Holy Ghost, but they're not really walking in that spirit-filled life. It's very apparent. Everybody look at your neighbor and say amen. amen. We are to submit to one another. I'm going to put people in positions I already have. And you're going to have to learn how to submit to them. Amen. we got little Pastor Tim and uh, Jennifer here. You're going to have to learn how to submit to them. That's right. Well, they're younger than I am. What has that got to do with anything? It has nothing to do with anything in the realm of the spirit here. We are to submit to one another. Why? In the fear of God. Why? Because if you don't submit, you're liable not to make it long. That's why people drop dead. They can't submit to anybody. If you won't submit to men, you won't submit to God. That's a perfect... If you're not submitted to, to men somewhere, you're not submitted to God. I promise you that. Same, same thing. If you're submitted to men, you, you, you can't really submit to men unless you submit to God. Not quite. This is why my, my, my book is, is, is changing everybody, the whole congregations. And pastors are preaching out of that thing when they get it. And they, and they call me on the phone saying, can I, can I use that? I said, preach it. They're preaching it themselves. Amen. They weren't bold enough to do it before. A lot of them knew a lot of this stuff. See, sheep love this stuff. Goats howl. And wolves make more noise than that. Wolves don't get into our congregation at all because I have that apostolic thing like Paul did. He told the pastors, he said, look, after I leave, they're going to come in here. There's something about the apostolic anointing that puts the hammer down on wolf ship. Everybody say amen. amen. We go to churches and have whole ex lax services. <laughs> if I... If, if I, if, I do, if I do a leadership seminar in there for four or five days, you'll hear the goats are baying and the wolves are, woo, -woo you know, you can hear them. And they'll manifest half for years everywhere we go. You say, why? Light exposes what? Darkness. You preach the word in a certain area. Those people have a wrong spirit about them. They will fill it. And they'll either change or they'll leave and go bother somebody else. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You're a good bunch. Everybody say amen. You are. You're a good bunch. 
You know, I've seen a lot of change in you. Oh, yeah. I've seen major changes. Why? We are teachable and filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you getting this now? Let's go through this real quick. Verse 22, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. How can you do that if not filled with the Holy Ghost overflowing? You can't do that. How, much, how long do we got? How long? 15 minutes left? Oh, plenty of time. Thank you. Everybody say amen. 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 Did you all hear what I just said? Yes. Your wife's never going to submit to you if she's not filled with the Holy Ghost and stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Forget it. This is why you got you know, these women who wear the pants, who run around trying to dominate their husbands, dominate the church, dominate everybody else because they think they're so spiritual. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, how many know you have a submissive spirit? That does not mean that you get beat on, ladies. Come on, everybody, and all that junk. Because, <laughs> he goes on to say, verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to the Christ, so let it be to theirs, their own husbands and everything. But then he goes on and says in verse 25, Husbands, what? Love your wives. Now, how many know you can't walk in love if you're not saturated and filled with the Holy Ghost? Right. These are spirit-filled. This is meant to be for spirit-filled, turned on, totally, completely sold out Christians. This is why a lot of Christians, it's amazing to me how some of these women can live. Now, I know that we got some ladies in here that are with men that are not Christians, really, or spirit-filled Christians, or, or don't even come to church, or, and, 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 and they get along great, and the Bible says that's wonderful. Hallelujah. Right. And they, and they submit, and, they, and they, can, they, can, they can really, some of them are better as far as letting their, their wives be involved in stuff than some Christian men. I'm serious. But then there's some women who will live with some guy, come on now, that is abusive to the children, abusive to them, lets drugs and alcohol in the home, and all that kind of stuff. What are you to do in that thing? You know, my advice to you is to go in Jesus' name. Amen. That's my advice to you. Get out of there and don't look back until, unless that guy changes. Everybody say amen. Yeah. Why? Because he's not going to change. If he hadn't changed up, well, I married him, you know, and, and I know he'll change. You better not marry somebody thinking they're going to change, honey. If they're not there now, I guarantee you. I promise you, most of the time, if they do change, it won't take you 10, 20 years of hell. Thank you. Amen. So when he's talking about submitting and when he's talking about loving, he's talking to born again, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost baptized, immersed to overflowing people. A woman cannot submit to a guy who's all messed up and wants to go to a bar. You can't submit to that. Huh? And you can't, and a woman, listen, listen, wife, you cannot submit to a man who wants to drag you to some dead church. Amen. Thank you. You're supposed to be shouting a little louder. You can't do that. You cannot disobey Jesus because your husband's an idiot. You can't disobey Jesus because your wife is an idiot. I remember Norval Hayes, one of the greatest ministries we've had in the last 50 years in the church. One of my spiritual dads. This guy is intense. He's one of the most anointed men you ever met. He's a multi, multi-millionaire, yet money has not, no hold on him whatsoever. He's the humblest man you ever saw and one of the most powerful anointed people you ever saw in your life. But when he first got saved, he was married to a lady because, you know, wealthy people. And he had a lot of money even then. How many know women like that? So he had a woman, country club woman. She, he says she looked like Elizabeth Taylor. And for Norval, that's saying something. And he said this woman, he said she was just so beautiful. And she, in some ways, she was really a great wife and mother and everything. But he says, you know what? He says Jesus came to him in a car. When he was out in the car and sat next to him, literally the glory of God filled that car and broke him down. He began to weep. And Jesus said, I've called you to go preach the gospel and, you know, and so on and so forth. And he went home and told his wife. And she says, we're not going to any of that fanatical stuff. Now, he'd been going to church. He's in a you know, Baptist church. I'll just say it because he said it. And all this stuff. And she wanted to look real good and nice. But this Holy Ghost stuff and all that, she ain't having no part of that. You do that. I didn't sign up for that. So what's Norval going to do? Compromise and go back? I'll tell you what he did. He said, look, he says, I love you and I want you to come with me. But if you're not going to come with me, hallelujah. See that door? 
See the knob on that door? Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. <laughs> Gave her an ultimatum because if she didn't want to serve God, he's going to serve God. Come on, everybody. Amen. You know what she did? She left him. Didn't turn out the way he wanted to. But he also had one of the greatest ministries in the history of America. Everybody say amen. 80-something years old, still just cooking. Got married again finally. 78 years, 76 years old, finally found one. He says, oh, I found one I think is good. But you know what? It took him six years to marry her. 76. I thought, normal, you better hurry up. You don't have, maybe have that much time here, you know. He didn't care. He wanted to make sure she was the right one. She, he, he looked her over, checked it over. Finally married her. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. See, there's, th there's more important things than being married, folks. Being filled with the Holy Ghost and being immersed with the Holy Ghost will make you happy. Staying filled to overflowing with the presence of God is what makes you happy. Are you guys out there today? I know this is not what you hear at first church, but I'm telling you the truth about this. Amen. Now, I didn't say leave your husband because he has a few problems or whatever. I'm saying these right into these husbands that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost. And he's writing, writing to wives that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And a little while later, he's going to write to children that have been filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost and taught to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. You, can you do that with your children? You got that right. Jennifer will tell you right now. This, this big, got her filled with the Holy Ghost when she was four. And I took her with me. And I walked for hours. And I held her on my arm, praying in tongues. And she prayed in tongues. She learned how to do it from the very beginning. It's, it's not up to them to learn that. It's up to you to teach them. You mean you can do that with your children? You got that. You got to teach them to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. She had to stay filled with the Holy Ghost down there at that school where they, 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 they criticized her and mocked her and just horrible things, threatened her life. You know, threatened her life. She had to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all understand what I'm saying today? Now let's read this very quickly because I got about 10 minutes or 5 minutes left. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. How many know uh, to be able to use the word of God and for the word to have full effect, you've got to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say amen when I say that. I'm saying, I, I want you to listen and, and say amen because it's true. You can come down here all the time. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, my words won't penetrate. The, the preaching and teaching won't hit good ground. You've got to keep your heart filled with the Holy Ghost. It's up to you, not me. You've got to come in this place filled with the Holy Ghost. You come in here carrying all kinds of cares and worries and anxieties, you're not going to hear a thing I say. In fact, you're not going to like me very much. Why? Because you're going to think I'm beating you up. You'll hear it from beat up standpoint instead of rejoice standpoint. That's what the problem is. Not the preachers, it's you. We're going to give it to you every way we can, praise God, but you've got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And Paul and Marcel are here today. And Paul and Marcel, when they're in California, go to Ed DeFrain's church. You go to Ed the Train Church, you better have your Holy Ghost shoes on. You think I'm rough. Because Ed will get you. Everybody say amen. But he's coming for, because he's filled with the Holy Ghost, and he'll give it to you good. Amen. Am I right or wrong? I'm right. He'll give it to you double dose. And his wife's even worse. <laughs> I'm serious. Great people. Are you listening to me? Some of the best. But we ought to all give it everything we got. Your business is your business. You come in here filled. My business is my business. I give it to you good. Then when we come in, we go out filled. Full of love. Corrected. Hallelujah, but free. Growing and rejoicing. Instead of going out and just say, well, I don't know what it was, but it was nice. <laughs> okay. Look at verse 27. That you might present him to yourself a glorious church. You, you getting the idea here? Yes. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So husbands, spirit-filled, born again, full, filled with the Holy Ghost, husbands ought to love their own Holy Ghost wives. Amen. 
No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are as members of the body of flesh and his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become what? One flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak now concerning the church, Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each, let each one of you particularly so love his own spirit-filled wife. Amen? Amen? Himself. And let the wife see that she respects her born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, submissive, full of God, husband. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, how many know Paul didn't go, well, chapter 6. So let's keep reading, just like chapter 6 is not there. Holy Ghost, Spirit, feel, baptize, immerse children. Obey your parents. Yes, yes. Now, if you get your, your, your kids filled with the Holy Ghost, they stay filled with the Holy Ghost, how many know they're not going to disobey their parents? And if they do, you should do something about it. What should I do? You should do what the Bible says. You should sit down and you should instruct them. And if they continue to do it, then what you do next is you sit down and say this. I love you very much, and this hurts me more than you, but give me that little lumber, wacko. Amen. That's right. Are you listening to me? Not, not hard enough to abuse them, but to let them know that they have been whacked a little bit. Then you send them down, and you take them to the scriptures, and you show them where they disobeyed, and you love on them and forgive them and give them a hug and say, I didn't want to have to do that, but that's what happens when you disobey. If you go out here and you disobey your teachers, that's what's going to happen to you. You go out here and you disobey, praise God, the, the authorities. This is what's going to happen to you. You'll, you'll end up in jail, and that's harder than what just happened here. And I'm trying to teach you not to get into jail. We're born-again, spirit-filled Christians. We don't act that way. Come on, everybody. Y'all getting this? Now, this is a parroting class. Just get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Stay filled with the Holy You can even make mistakes, and God will still turn around for good. Amen. And don't be afraid if you punish your children for something that was stupid or they didn't do to get down on your knees and say, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. You know what? That's a good thing. When you do that and look them in the eyes, they go, wow, my daddy and mama make mistakes, but they're humble, and they ask for it. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You guys getting anything out of this? Yeah. Children, obey your parents. You spirit-filled children, obey your spirit-filled parents in the Lord, for this is right. Yeah. Honor your what? Your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Now, children, obey your parents in the Lord. That's both spiritual parents as well as natural parents. That's right. yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Some people don't even have any spiritual parents. They don't have a pastor or a church. Now, I'm not here to control you or tell you what to do, but as far as the church goes, how many know we ought to obey those that yeah. God has assigned yeah. to do things? Yeah. Now, that does not mean that you, I tell you, ah, go, you know, you have to buy a certain kind of clothes or any of that's your business in your home. But how many know here, somebody has to be in charge? Yeah. And it ain't the deacon board no. or the elder board or whatever they call it, a bunch of businessmen who have no anointing on them to do that. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I got, it was pretty good up till then. I got a little resistance on that. It's the truth, though. Well, who do you submit to? I submit to God, number one, but I submit to men that are anointed that are over me, that have a concept of what it means to be anointed, number one, a concept to know what it's like in ministry, number two, a concept to deal with us if something happens where they know what they're doing so the church don't get messed up. Turn to everybody and say, hallelujah. That's a good one. It's the way it's supposed to work. Who do you think I got? A bunch of people who've never been in ministry don't understand what this is all about. You can't have that. Verse 4, we're finishing. <laughs> and your fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. How, how many know spirit filled fathers shouldn't provoke their children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord? Y'all get the point? Yeah. Let's finish this next week. Stand to your feet for a second. I'm done. You're getting the idea, aren't you? Yes. You see, when you read the Bible, understand he's addressing spirit-filled people. In the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, you'll find out he's addressing spirit-filled people who talk in tongues all the time who are carnal as Bill Hogan's goat. They were addressing people who drank, who got drunk, even in church sometimes when they were out there doing the communion wine. And Paul was not a happy camper. And he told him, the reason you're doing, when you're doing this, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to end up dying prematurely because of your attitudes towards one another, the way you do things, the way you think. Here you are all bound up with alcohol and everything, and you get spilled, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you go back to all that kind of thing. 
Why do you need alcohol or drugs when you got the Holy Ghost? The problem with you is you've never been really filled overflowing, haven't stayed with it long enough to where that joy and that power hits you to where, hey, you know, the, mo the most high is the best high. There's no high like the most high. You can't make a buy that brings you high like the most high. You can't even come close to that. You can't even come close to that. Everybody say amen. amen. There ain't no, nothing in that world that is like being filled to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. There is nothing. There's no material thing. There's no car. There's no building. There's no house. There's no man. There's no woman. There's no sex. There's no alcohol. There's no drug. There's nothing in this world that comes close to being filled and stand filled with the Holy Ghost. When are you going to get a hold of that? There is nothing. I tried it all. I was like Solomon. Tried it twice. When I sinned, I did it with fervor. When I went out to the bars, I gave it my best shot. When I did things, I did them all out. And none of it brought me any lasting peace. Are you listening to me? But when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm the same way today. I'm more excited now. I'll pour my things into the things of God now. I don't want those things. I want everything God has. Hallelujah. They are the things that last. These are the things that are eternal. These are the things that bring you joy. You can try for the rest of your life to find out what brings you peace, but I'm telling you, you're going to come someday back to the cross, get down on your knees, make Jesus your Lord, get filled with the Holy Ghost. So why wait? Why not do it now? Because that's where you're going to end up anyway. Especially if this bunch is praying for you. You can rebel and think you're going to get it some other way and you, there's another way to do this and so on and so forth, but there is no way but God's way. Amen. Jesus said it this way, I am the way. Amen. That settles it. Yeah, but don't you think maybe they're Mohammed, some of them? No, I don't. Don't you think Judaism? No, I don't. Don't you think Muslim? No, no, no. Jesus is what? The way, the truth, the life. Everybody say amen. amen. How many got something out of this today? Raise your hands. Just go like this. I got something out of that. Now, what is it? What is it? You got to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Your life's going to go away. You were created and made to stay filled with the Holy Ghost all the time. Everybody in here. Not live a any of your life not being filled, staying filled and immersed. It's dangerous nowadays. We're getting to the point now to where it's just downright dangerous. You can't have your kids go out to a secular school and they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you kidding me? How many know people are nuts? Yes. There's a lot of people out there that will kill you for a pair of shoes. There is. There's people out there that are so demented, they will kill you. They'll shoot you for no reason. You cut in line. You just cut in line out there on the, on the freeway somewhere in front of them, and they will go into a rage, such a rage, that they will come, they'll come at you and they will shoot you. Did you know that? Not just hundreds of them. There's thousands of them. They're all over the place. Did you know there's thousands of serial killers all over the world? that kill people for pleasure all the time. They're everywhere. Did you know there's people out there right now that will embezzle you, lie to you, cheat you, steal everything you have, and don't care about your family, your kids, or anything? They'll take anything they can from you. They're so demon-possessed. And they're everywhere. Did you know that? How many knew that? Raise your hands if you knew that. So we don't want our children and our people to walk out of here without being baptized and overflowing with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You say, well, Pastor Tom, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to tell you this right now. I have given altar calls all over America and around the world for people to get filled with the Holy Ghost, but today I want you to go home and think about this. And I want you to realize how important it is because you've seen it. Some of you have seen it for the first time. It's a commandment. Everybody say amen. amen. What I want you to do is I want you to get down on your knees in your room and just say, God... I want you to feel me. I want you to put me back where I was when I first got saved with that, that same experience. And I'm going to pray in tongues for a while here or whatever until I get to that place. And I'm going to walk in the Spirit. Everybody say amen. amen. The Bible says if you walk in the what? Spirit. 
you will not what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. How many here are tired of religion? Listen, how many came from churches where they're, just, they're loaded with hypocrites? Come on, just be honest with me about it. Just loaded with them. Go to church on Sunday, cuss like a sailor on Monday. Go to church on Sunday, and they get around their secular friends, and they're right back doing the same old thing. What is that? You're being pulled by the wrong spirit. Your, the Holy Ghost anointing on you, and your spirit has to be stronger to resist that pull. That's what God wants. In other words, you will be tempted. There will be temptations and pulls. But what you've got to do is say, greater is he that is in me than that pull. I'm walking away from this. And there's times, literally, you're going to have to walk right away from things. Family. Sometimes they're doing foolishness. Come on, everybody. Friends. Oh, yeah, friends. Sometimes you're going to have old friends. You're going to have to say, you know what? I love you, but I'm going to have to cut off fellowship with you because you just... You just, you just want to push the envelope on this stuff. And I'm not like I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Amen. What will you do if you do that? You'll get new friends. Amen. What will they be? True friends. Amen. Not flaky friends that try to drag you back into things that, that are destroying your life. Right. Join hands. I want to pray for you. This is important this morning.